Thank you for watching Light of the Way on Gospel Broadcasting Network. My name is Charles Cochran with the East Ridge Church of Christ. I want to challenge our thinking with a great and a powerful illustration, a parable that Jesus taught as recorded by Matthew in the 22nd chapter of his gospel account. The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding, and they were not willing to come. Again, he sent out other servants saying, tell those who are invited, see, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and fatted cattle are killed, and all things are ready, come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his business. That little phrase, but they made light of the invitation is a challenging thought because it indicates that those who had received this invitation did not take seriously the invitation that was given to them. They made light of it. We might say that they just sort of brushed it aside and they did not think of the wonderful blessing that that wedding feast would provide for them. It is true today that if you and I think carefully about the way that most people think regarding spiritual things. Is it not true that most people are making light and they are not taking seriously those things that relate to God and to his word? A little child one day was sitting with his mother. And as he sat with the mother, he began crying. And the mother asked the child, what are you crying about? And the child said, I am thinking about the death of Christ. And the mother looked at the little child and said, oh, that's okay. Don't take it so seriously. Now you think about what that mother is saying to that little child. When that child with tears in his eyes thinks about the death of Christ, it brings great sorrow to his heart. And the mother may be trying to help the child overcome his sadness and crying, just simply said, don't take it so seriously. Well, I believe that we live in a time, an age, and a culture when things relating to sin is not taken seriously. We can sort of brush it aside or we can look at it and say, well, that's not really that bad or it's not that serious. But when you and I think about the cross, and we think about the death of Jesus upon that cross, we need to be asking ourselves, why was Jesus upon that cross? Well, it was not because of his sins that he was being crucified. It was because, as the Apostle Paul said, upon him was laid the iniquity of us all. Him who knew no sin became sin for us. If you don't think sin is serious, we need to go and we need to look upon the cross and realize Jesus dying there was because of the reality of sin. The only reason that Jesus left heaven and came down to this earth was because of a sinful world. Because sin in its reality Sin and the very fact that men and women are guilty of sin caused Jesus to come and to die shedding his blood in order that men and women could be forgiven of sin. I believe that sin is serious and we need to take it in a serious way because of its very definition. What do we mean by the word sin? How do we define it? Well, the Bible says in 1 John 3, verse 4, Whoever commits sin commits also lawlessness, for sin is lawlessness. Now, when I think about law, I think about the commandments of God. I think about what God has told you and me to do or not to do. And when I read and I understand what is recorded in the law of God, the word of God, and I violate or I live as if the law of God was not even there, and the law of God doesn't apply to me or to my situation, and I live above the law of God, 
I become guilty of sin. It is lawlessness. It is living as if the law of God was not there in our lives. And we violate either by committing things that are in violation to the law of God or we leave undone things that God's law commands us to do. Now, again, by definition, sin is described by the Apostle Paul in Romans 3 in this way. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now look at that little phrase, fall short of the glory of God. For really that's what sin involves. Here is the glory of God. Here is the way that God wants us to live. And when you and I live according to God's word, that is according to his law, it is that which God asks us, commands us to do, and how we are to live. And when you and I fall short, and I just might imagine that here is God's plan for my life. Here is God's will for my life. And when I fall short of what God commands me to do, then I am guilty of sin. Well, the Bible says all have sinned. There's none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3 verse 9. And therefore, when I think about its definition of lawlessness, of falling short of the glory of God, the Bible also says, Therefore to him that knows to do good, and doeth it not to him, it is sin. A lot of times I know what is good and what God would require of me and ask me to do. And when I know to do good, and I don't do it, I am guilty of sin. So by its very definition, sin is serious. But not only is sin serious by its very definition, it is serious because of the very demonstration of the way sins are committed in people's lives. The Bible gives us a way that sin is demonstrated in the way that individuals may live upon this earth. And we have the description and the demonstration of sin as Paul says, now the works of the flesh are evident. That is, the works of the flesh, sinful things, are demonstrated. It is evident. What are they, Paul? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I have also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now again, notice that the Bible gives us a demonstration of how sin is committed in our lives. Now I know that when I read through these things that are the works of the flesh, all of us are guilty in one way or another of some of these works of the flesh. Now, we may not be guilty of all of them. I may not be guilty of adultery, that is sexual sin with another person's wife, or you may be with another person's husband as a wife with that husband of somebody else. You may say, well, I'm not guilty of adultery or fornication, sexual sin that is committed outside of marriage. I may not be guilty of murder or I may not be guilty of drunkenness and things of that nature, but there are also sins of attitude, such as hatred or contention or jealousy, outburst of wrath, selfish ambitions. You see, sin by its demonstration, by the way that we live our lives, caught up in sin are things that all of us if we really are honest and sincere with our own hearts, we must say, well, these are things that I know that I have been guilty of doing. And therefore, by its demonstration, sin is a very serious matter. Sin is also serious by its very deceitfulness. You know, the Hebrew writer says that we are to be very careful and not harden our hearts lest we be deceived by sin. Sin, you see, has such a power. It has such an ability. And the Bible says of the devil, he was a liar from the beginning. He did not abide in the truth. 
because the devil is the greatest person who deceives the hearts of men and women today. And if we're not careful, we listen unto the devil's deceit. And so it's so easy for you and me to listen to the temptations that he holds out. And I really believe that that is what we see occurring in the Garden of Eden. How was it that the devil in the form of the serpent comes unto the woman and he holds out before Eve and her husband Adam standing there together and the devil is practicing his deception? And sin, you see, has a way of weaving itself into our hearts that we are deceived by the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life. And the devil says, well, now, if you will simply give in to what I am offering to you as a way of life, if you will listen to what I'm saying, you will enjoy the lust of the flesh Your eyes and the lust of your eyes will be satisfied and the pride of life, while you're going to be like God, you're going to know good and evil. And through all of that means of temptation by the devil, he deceived the woman. Well, he's still busy at that today, is he not? The devil is still out there in our world as an enemy, as a spiritual foe, as a powerful force, and he's deceiving the nations. In the book of Revelation, the Bible says that the devil is cast out of heaven and he comes down to earth and he has great wrath and he knows that his time is short. So the devil is going about today deceiving the hearts of men and women by the things that he uses as he did with Adam and Eve. He uses these lust of the flesh, lust of the eye and the pride of life as a powerful means of deception. And he will allure men and women into his web of deception in such a way that it's easy if we listen to his deception to give in to those temptations. Therefore, you and I, as we think about how serious sin really is by its definition, by its demonstration, and by its deceitfulness. We need to understand today that sin is a very, very serious thing. We may think, well, there are times or situations in which we are struggling with spiritual things in our lives. We have great challenges to overcome. And as we think about the challenges that we have to overcome in our lives, the greatest challenge that you and I have is overcoming the power of sin that is held out to us. And as that little child on that occasion was crying because that child was thinking about the death of Christ. Never forget, it is the death of Jesus that was possible and that was accomplished because of sin. And because of sin, I want to turn away from it in repentance. I don't want to continue in sin. I want to live a life of submission to God and to His Word and to His will for my life. I want my sins to be forgiven. And it may be that you wonder today, how can I be forgiven of sin? What do I need to do? I really see and I understand what you're saying. I agree. Sin is a serious matter. What can I do about it? The Bible says, and now why do you await? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling upon the name of the Lord. When one thus hears the gospel He believes that gospel. He believes that Jesus is God's Son. And in genuine repentance, he turns from his sins, confesses his faith in Christ. He is baptized into the death of Jesus. The blood of Christ washes, cleanses, and removes sin from our past. And as I walk in the light, I have the blood of Jesus to continue to cleanse me every day of the sins that I commit. My friend, you and I need to really seriously take sin to be a thing that is very, very serious because of what it did to Christ, what it did to God, what it will do to you and me if we continue in it.
Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.